Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the four different habits that are making you poor because of the way that you're investing in crypto. Now hear me here, I'm not saying that investing in cryptocurrency is going to make you poor, but what I am absolutely saying is that the way that you're investing in cryptocurrency can ruin your chances at becoming financially sovereign. You see, we talk all the time about the technical analysis of reading Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. We talk a lot about the different cryptocurrencies that we should or that we should not buy, but in today's video, I'm going to peel back the face of John and Susan Woodman's personal finances, a fictional family, and show you the things that they're doing right, the things that they're doing wrong, and the four things that they need to stop doing and correct so that their cryptocurrency investment actually helps them become financially sovereign rather than draining away their wealth. Make no mistake, I am a huge fan of cryptocurrency. I think you absolutely should invest in it, but there are some mistakes that people make when they're investing in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency that can ruin your chances of actually using cryptocurrency as a vehicle to become financially sovereign, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So without much further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. John and Susan Woodman are a young family following what's known as the Tink Methods. That's two incomes, no kids. They don't have any children yet, but they're hoping to have some in the future. So they're trying to set themselves up in a way that they will be able to afford those kids and be able to afford to have a nice lifestyle with them, i.e. go to Disney World, whatever state it may be in at the time, or have a nice car so they can drive them all around in their big mom van, whatever it may be. They want to have a nice life when those kids come, but they're not there yet. John is a 25-year-old electrician. He makes $78,000 a year. And after taxes, he brings home $62,105 a year, which comes to $2,388.65 every two weeks on his pay check every second Friday. Now, Susan is 27 years old. She is currently five years through a six-year college career to become a math teacher in a high school, hoping that one day, once they have kids, she could teach their own children how to do math. As a preschool teacher, she currently earns $26,000 a year, which after taxes comes to $22,651, which comes to $817.19 every single paycheck. That means that every second Friday, Susan and John together, because their finances are combined, bring home $3,259.80. That means on a normal two paycheck month, they bring home $6,520 that they are able to spend. We're just going to leave the cents off from this point because it makes more sense. Now that we understand their income, we're about to talk about their expenses, their debt, their financial picture, and I'm going to show you some of the things that they're doing right that you should continue to do if you're doing these things, and if you're not, you should start doing them. And I'm also going to show you some of the mistakes that they're making that they might think are good decisions, but are actually short-circuiting their ability to achieve financial sovereignty. I'm going to show you that they should not be doing that and what they should do instead. Now that we know that their monthly income is $6,520, you should also know that being five years into her college career, Susan has $55,000 in student loans at a 4.6% interest rate. That brings her monthly payment to $572.67 every single month. Their monthly expenses, including housing, car payment, gasoline, groceries, food, and everything else comes to $3,500 a month, plus Susan's $572 a month debt payment that she is paying on her student loans. Considering she's making no extra payment over the 10-year term, Susan will end up paying nearly $14,000 in interest to the loan holder. Now, you might notice there's a very big difference between $4,072, which is what they're spending on their expenses and their debt payments, and the $6,520 that they are bringing in. So far, their finances are set up pretty well. They're living on about 65 to 70% of what they're bringing in. The problem comes with what they're doing with the other $2,000 or so. You see, John is a huge fan of cryptocurrency and... He's also a subscriber to the Crypto Jeb YouTube channel. That, my friends, is something that he's got right. You guys should definitely follow in his footsteps on that. Hit that subscribe button down below. But see, the problem is because John is such a big fan of cryptocurrency, but he doesn't have a very deep understanding and knowledge base of cryptocurrency, He's got a few things off about the way he and Susan are investing in cryptocurrency. You see, they're investing $2,300 every single month into cryptocurrency, which means their budget is still balanced. If you add $2,300 a month to what they were already spending on their expenses, which is $4,072, then you come to them spending $6,372 every single month, which leaves them with $148 left over. That means that they do have a balanced budget, including all their expenses, debt payment, and investments. This may look like you. This has looked like me in the past, where it looks like, wow, my expenses are low. I'm investing a lot into cryptocurrency. On the surface, if that's all the information you have, everything seems to be great. We want to be investing in something. Cryptocurrency is a great place to invest your money. One of the early problems that we see is that if we analyze what John is doing with that $2,300 a month into cryptocurrency, we realize that he's putting the vast majority of it into very small speculative cryptocurrencies that are outside of the top 100 that have a very small chance of ever becoming anything at all. And he's got less than 15% of his portfolio in Bitcoin and Ethereum combined. Many of the different cryptocurrencies that he's invested in just 
by the luck of the draw, are going to end up being worth nothing because everything out of the top 100, there's like a 95% chance that is going to end up going to zero at some point in the next three to five years. He might get lucky on one cryptocurrency, but is that going to make up for losing money on the other 95% of his investment in that category? Probably not. Because of the way that John is investing in cryptocurrency, he's basically just throwing money away every single month because he doesn't have his personal finances set up in a way to help his family achieve financial sovereignty, but he also is not following a very profitable and wise investment strategy in cryptocurrency. So before we talk about what they're doing wrong and let that lead us into the four things that you need to stop doing before it bankrupts you in your cryptocurrency investment, let's at least talk about some of the things they're doing right. First and foremost, they are investing in something. This is a mindset that the vast majority of America is not in. The vast majority of America doesn't think about investing. They think about if they're investing in something, oh, I'm investing in my health because I'm eating Chipotle five times a week. Oh, I'm investing in my ability to transport myself because I just bought a brand new Mercedes and I need wheels, right? I got to get to work somehow. The United States population has a massively backwards understanding of how investment works and what actually constitutes a profitable appreciation investment. Ordering out and spending $30 a day on Chipotle might be good for your health. It is absolutely not good for your pocketbook. Spending $750 a month on a Mercedes car payment because, well, you got to get to your job being a cashier at Publix is not a good decision. When we are investing, we are talking about putting money into something that has a very high likelihood of bringing us a return with low risk and high reward. Now, sometimes if we have extremely high reward, then we're willing to take on high risk. Cryptocurrency is an example of that. Now, by the way, I'm not saying that cryptocurrency is overly risky. I'm not turning into one of these anti-crypto guys, but what you will agree with me on is that crypto is extremely, extremely valuable. Almost all of us have lost over 60% of our portfolio, even if our portfolio was mainly in Bitcoin over the last two years, myself included. So I'm very happy that they are investing in something because their mindset's in the right place, especially considering they're putting like a third of their income into investments. But we'll talk about what they're doing a little bit later. The second thing that they're doing right and what you should emulate is that their personal finances are balanced. They are profiting if they stay within their budget, $148 every single month. Their budget is either balanced or in profit, and that's where you want to be. You either want one of two things. You want a zero-based budget, which means that if you bring in $6,500 a month, then all of your budget line items add up to exactly $6,500. Or two, you can end up having a profit-based budget where you spend, for example, $6,372 a month, like John and Susan do, but you bring in $6,520 a month, so you're profiting $148 every single month. You definitely want to make sure that you're not spending more money every single month than you're bringing in no matter what, because eventually, unless you're doing that because you're in between jobs or something and you're actively looking for a job, you're going to end up running out of money and you're going to have to cut something. And I don't think you want to get rid of your car or your house or food. So good job to John and Susan for not having what's known as a burn rate. Now, the third thing that you might not have realized that they're doing right is that John and Susan are working to increase their income. Because the thing I didn't tell you is that when Susan completes her master's program, she's going to expect to go from making $26,000 a year being a preschool teacher to over $40,000 a year being a math teacher for a high school because of her master's degree. So the third thing that they're doing right is they are working over a period of years to increase their top line income. Investing, having a balanced budget, and working to increase your income in some way other than just relying on your investments are all things that you should be doing in your personal finances. Now, let's talk about what they're doing wrong. I'm going to show you four things that they're doing wrong and what you should do instead because these four things are going to make you not financially sovereign. They're going to make you a slave to your cryptocurrency portfolio, which is the exact opposite of what I'm trying to help you guys achieve through the concept of financial sovereignty. First and foremost, most they have no savings. If John gets electrocuted because, you know, he's an electrician or Susan gets a horrible illness that means that she can't work for a week or two weeks or a month or two months, they have no savings to fall back on whatsoever because they don't have anything budgeted to go into savings. All of their savings and investment is going into just investment and just into cryptocurrency. We'll get to that in a minute. Not only do they not have any savings, they're also not saving every single month. There's a difference. It's one thing to have $50,000 in savings, but not be putting anything into it every month. But John and Susan have no savings and they're not saving every single month. Now, here's something you need to keep in mind. Some people save too much. They just stuff money under a mattress and they've got 400 grand sitting under their mattress. And what they don't realize is that Uncle Sam can tax that $400,000 
without ever laying their finger on it because they can increase the supply of the U.S. dollars everywhere else and silently, without ever touching your money, tax your money. In 30 years, that $400,000 you have under that mattress will be worth half of what it's worth today. And if you're over-investing in your savings account, then you are bankrupting yourself slowly but surely. So make no mistake, I'm not telling you to invest too much into savings, but what I am telling you is that you do need to have some savings. Most people, including myself, would recommend having six to 12 months of expenses in savings so that if you lose your job, you have enough time to find something else. So on the one hand, don't turn into the person that has 30 years in savings because by the time you get to the 30 years of using that money, half of it will have inflated away. But I also don't want you to be like John and Susan and have no savings. Here's what you should do instead and here's what John and Susan could do instead. What my family likes to do and what I definitely recommend is setting up two different parts of your budget. Number one, the expense part. Number two, the debt payment, savings, and investment part of your budget. John and Susan are set up pretty well here because they're spending $4,072 a month on expenses and then they're spending $2,300 a month on their debt payment savings and investment. But the problem they're running into is that they're putting it all into cryptocurrency and not saving and not paying off debt. The very first thing they should do, the number one of the four things is you should make sure that you have some money going into savings every single month. And you should make sure that it's probably at least five to 10% of your income or until you get to a place where you have six to 12 months of living expenses in savings. If it costs you $50,000 a year to live, then try and have between $25,000 and $50,000 in United States dollars. I'm not talking about stable coins. I'm talking about United States dollars in a bank account ideally in a high yield savings account that'll get you about 4.75% right now that will combat inflation. Hold that money there in case you need it. The first thing they're doing wrong is they're not putting money into savings every month and they have no savings. What you should do instead is make sure you have a budget line item for putting money into savings in case your cryptocurrency portfolio goes to zero because you're overinvested in altcoins or because you lose your job. The second problem that John and Susan have is that they are overexposed in cryptocurrency in their debt payment, savings, and investment part of their budget. What do I mean? Well, first and foremost, they don't have anything in stocks. They still don't have anything in savings, but we already talked about that. And they're also not putting anything into debt payment. For this example, specifically, I want to point out the fact that they are only investing in cryptocurrency. That is extremely risky. Now, look, I am a cryptocurrency YouTuber. I talk about cryptocurrency every single day. I'm a big fan of the cryptocurrency industry, but I need to make something very obvious to you guys. Bitcoin is the least risky asset that you can invest in in cryptocurrency. But in the grand scheme of investment, when we're talking about stock market, when we're talking about real estate, when we're talking about uh, bonds or high yield savings accounts or anything, it is one of the most risky investments. And by risky, I don't mean that it's at risk of going to zero. I don't mean that it's at risk of getting hacked. I don't mean that it's at risk of coming under some kind of cyber attack. I've talked about all of the hardening that Bitcoin has to all of those things in plenty of videos. When I say risk, I simply mean that it's one of the most volatile assets, even though I do believe and I'm very confident that it will go back to all time high and beyond. That being said, your life does not revolve around cryptocurrency as much as cryptocurrency might be a part of it. John and Susan putting money only into cryptocurrency is shortchanging their ability to put money into the stock market, to put money into bonds, maybe save some of that money because that's a considerable amount of money, $2,300 a month, put some money into a savings account to buy a rental property or something else that will increase their net worth and push them towards the path of financial sovereignty. So the second issue is that they are overexposed to cryptocurrency and they would be much better off putting a considerable amount of that investment income into other things such as bonds, such as the stock market, such as maybe saving for a rental property. And that's exactly what you should do. Instead of having every dime that you invest going into cryptocurrency, it is very wise to put a lot of your investment into extremely stable long-term growth stocks or bonds or a real or a real estate investment or something that's going to bring you considerable but stable lower long-term returns over the next 10 to 15 years. Don't be overexposed to cryptocurrency, invest in cryptocurrency, but make sure you're invested in a wide range of things as well. The third problem that John and Susan have is that when they are investing in cryptocurrency, they're investing in the wrong thing. I'll have to talk about this in another video, but quite simply, when you invest in cryptocurrency, I think it's very wise to take whatever amount of money you're going to invest every month, and you should have an amount of money that you're going to invest every month until you get to the ratio of your net worth being in cryptocurrency that you want it to be. So if you want 10% of your net worth in crypto, dollar cost average every month till you get there. But you should have that monthly amount that you're investing dollar cost averaging if you're trying to do that. Their problem is not that they're not investing enough into crypto, it's that they're not balancing what they're investing in crypto correctly. Remember what I said earlier, John and Susan have less than 15% of their portfolio in Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two most stable cryptocurrency assets in the entire space. I often recommend the 50-30-20 rule, 50% of your portfolio into Bitcoin, 30% in Ethereum, 20% in 
everything else. The reason for that is it's a much better idea to get rich slowly than to get filthy rich over the next two months and lose it all because you got rich on Pepe. I'm sorry, that was a low blow. It is very important that when you are investing in the cryptocurrency space that you build a foundation for your investment portfolio that is going to help you ride out the ups and downs in crypto. Guys, Bitcoin is the most stable of all the cryptocurrency assets, and it still can lose 70 to 80% of its value every four years. That is extreme volatility compared to most other asset classes that you're going to be able to find that are legitimate. John and Susan need to flip the script entirely and make sure they're not just putting 15% of their portfolio into Bitcoin and Ethereum. They need to flip the script entirely and make sure 15% of their investment are in those smaller cap speculative moon bag kind of cryptocurrencies. Just make sure that the speculative part of your cryptocurrency portfolio is less than 10%. The smaller altcoin part of your portfolio is not taking up half of your portfolio. And you've got at least half of your cryptocurrency portfolio in Bitcoin and Ethereum so that you have a backbone for the rest of your investments. That is what you should do instead of what John and Susan are doing, putting everything into speculative altcoins that are outside of the top 500. Now, the fourth and final thing that John and Susan are doing wrong that I'm going to show you what you could do instead is that they are living on $4,072 a month, but they're bringing in $6,520 a month, and they're not actively paying off that student loan at a faster rate than they could be. Remember this calculator from earlier. Right now, over the course of 10 years, Susan is going to have to pay $13,719 on that interest to the bank. One of the reasons that you don't want to take debt is because you have to pay for that debt to whoever holds the debt. Over the next 10 years, Susan is going to have to pay almost $14,000 on top of the $55,000 that she had to pay for to buy herself a master's degree, especially while only making 40 grand a year. I feel really bad for teachers in this country. John and Susan, instead of putting $2,300 a month into crypto, would benefit by doing something like this. First and foremost, they should put $1,000 a month of that $2,300 account right into that student loan. Let me show you what that does. In this same bank rate calculator, you can see currently Susan is going to have to pay $13,719 in interest. But if John and Susan were to pay $1,000 a month in extra principal payment on that loan, she would only have to pay $4,167 in interest over the course of that 10-year loan. And she would pay the loan off many, many, many years faster, meaning that the $572 a month that she's paying would disappear and they could use that money for whatever they want. All by working in a financially sovereign way, taking a little bit of money out of their investments, putting it in to paying off that debt. Not only will she save herself nearly $10,000 over the course of the next 10 years, which comes to about $1,000 a year, which comes to about $86 a month that she could have been spending on anything else like putting equity into their home. She's also going to be getting rid of that $572 a month payment much faster. This is actually something our family did. I bought a basically brand new Camry about two years ago, and I took a loan out on it because I wanted to build credit. I literally made enough money the day, and I'm not saying this to brag, I'm just letting you know about the kind of decisions that we made. We made enough money that day to buy the car in cash. I chose to not buy the car in cash and take the payment because I wanted to be able to build the credit. I'm very young. I needed it. I held on to the loan payment for about two years. And recently, we started putting $5,000 a month into paying off the car. We paid the car off in three months because we wanted to get rid of the $378.65 car payment that was attached to our 2019 Camry. Because we did that, we increased our net worth by $15,000 because the car basically is worth the same amount that it was. And with the used car market, it's actually kind of going up right now. And we saved ourselves for our personal finances $378.65 that we could spend on whatever else we wanted. I am recommending John and Susan would do the same thing in this situation, and you might benefit from doing that. So the fourth and final thing that John and Susan should do instead is that they should reduce, and you're going to think, Jeb, aren't you a cryptocurrency YouTuber? You're going to get burned at the stake for saying this. They should reduce the amount of money that they're investing in crypto every single month and get rid of that debt so that they have $572 a month that they get back and the $1,000 a month principal payment that they get back. Now they have almost $1,600 a month that they can turn around and put into savings or right back into cryptocurrency. One of the best ways to become financially sovereign is to get rid of your debt. So those are four of the things that John and Susan are doing to break their financial sovereignty, even though they are investing a lot into cryptocurrency. And I'm also showing you four things that they should do differently, and maybe you've learned from that. First and foremost, they have no savings, and they're not saving every single month. You absolutely should be saving every single month until you have six to 12 months of savings just in case you lose your job. Second of all, they're putting all of their investment money into cryptocurrency. They should absolutely diversify and get some stocks, bonds, maybe save up for a rental property. Third, their cryptocurrency 
portfolio is completely out of balance and they absolutely should rebalance it so they're holding on to less risky more stable cryptocurrencies such as bitcoin and ethereum rather than xyz coin that's ranked number 573 on coin market cap and might disappear tomorrow just like uh, her preschool teacher's salary i really feel bad for teachers the fourth and final thing that they should do is they should get rid of that debt payment asap because they will be saving 572 dollars a month they won't be financially serving the bank they will achieve financial sovereignty because their finances will be serving them rather than them serving the uh, the loan holder and they'll have almost six hundred dollars a month more that they can either use for kids that they want in the future or investing even more and building their net worth i know this is a bit of an unorthodox video i hope it was helpful for you because i don't just want to talk about cryptocurrency on this channel i also want to help you to understand how to truly become financially sovereign using cryptocurrency as one of the vehicles to get you there my passion is absolutely for cryptocurrency is absolutely for charting but it's also absolutely to make a radical change in my life and in your life so that we are not any more servants to our money but we are now having our money serve us and hopefully the fictional example of john and susan woodman will help you to understand how you can make some changes in your life that'll better your financial picture tell me down below was this helpful have you been doing any of the things that john and susan had been doing have you learned from any of the tips that i've given you and are you going to change anything moving forward and also tell me down below if you would be interested in being an anonymous example in a video like this in the future i would love to use real numbers not just numbers i made up using a little bit of research on Google. So if you're interested in being an example in a video like this, you can be anonymous. Just let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that post notification bell so you won't miss a single upload. Before I go, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.